Committee. And I would call today's meeting to order um, and ask first if there is anyone in the audience who wishes to comment on any item not listed on today's agenda. Seeing no one come forward, we will close the public comment period. The next item is the approval of the minutes of our last meeting. Any additions, corrections, or a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Arnrich, second by Butt. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that carries unanimously. The next item is our consent calendar. Anyone wish to pull any item or ask a question or a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Taylor, second by Arnrich. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. Thank you very much. We are on to our regular agenda items, and we got there before Mr. <laughs> Smith is here. Mark Watts is here, but um, well, Lindsay, he, he actually sends his regrets. He's not going to be able to join us this morning, but he That's has okay. offered to come brief the board at the board meeting if they'd like once um, the deadline for the governor to sign all of his bills has passed. That makes um, good sense. So he did uh, send me a few items he wanted to bring to your attention, so I'm going to do that on his behalf this morning. Um, one is an executive order that Governor Newsom recently issued that directs state agencies and departments to review and update operations, transportation investments, all related to climate resiliency. So specifically, CalSTA is directed to invest $5 billion annually towards construction, operations, maintenance, to help reverse the trend of increased fuel consumption and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So that's something that uh, he is keeping his eye on for us. And the other big item he wanted to bring to our attention was the safe rule that the Trump administration recently um, invoked. And uh, CalCog has a really great primer on this on their website and a lot of information the long and short of it is the safe rule reduces the fuel efficiency standards nationwide, and that has a negative effect on how California tries to meet its air quality goals and could potentially impact our transportation funding as well. Um, so again, CalCog has a really great primer, and the, the reason it will potentially impact our transportation funding is California uses a specific model called the MFAC model um, to demonstrate that we are in conformance with our state air quality goals and, and other transportation goals. And now that the standards have been changed or will be changed effective in November, that model is outdated. That's what all of the metropolitan planning organizations use to show that our projects um, meet, meet federal criteria. So um, we now have an outdated model and no way to, to show that. So uh, that is something that I know a lot of folks in the state are watching really, really closely. Um, and we maybe can get a little more detail on that from Mark Watts in a few weeks. Um, the few bills that are still pending governor's review and signature include um, AB 1025, which is the Grayson bill about the Iron Horse Trail, uh, sponsored by Contra Costa County. So we're waiting to see what happens with that. And uh, Senate Bill 277, which is the bill put forward by the Self-Help Counties Coalition to change the formula allocation for the local partnership program of SB1 um, that is still sitting on the governor's desk. So um, I'm sure we'll have much more information on both of those, hopefully, in a, in a not too long period of time. Um, so if there are any questions on the state side of the house, I'm happy to take them before I jump over to give a, a quick brief federal update. Any questions on state legislation? Okay. Well, I promised to make the federal update short and sweet. The very first item um, in your report from our advocates is a notification that USDOT was going to be announcing the automated demonstration grant award winners. And uh, we have won one of those awards. So with that, actually, I'm going to turn on the screen, Christina, if you're able to. And uh, Mr. Iwasaki is going to give you just a brief overview of what we're going to do with that grant award. Thank you. We're, we're very proud to have received this award. It's actually on the front screen there as well. So we put together a proposal of three components 
and the automated driving system grant program was a competitive grant nationwide, sixty million dollars up to ten million or fifteen million per state, ten million per ask. And so part way through the process, we were asked because we asked for ten, or no, actually we asked for nine point nine eight million, not quite ten, because we don't want to look like we we're greedy. So we didn't ask for all all the ten, and then we're we're. I think Tim might have gotten the call. Would you would you be okay with seven and a half million? We said, yeah, seven and a half is good. <laughs> so we knew we were we had answered three rounds of questions. So we knew we were getting pretty close to getting that. But it's a really I think it's a very very good demonstration of how technology can help us here in Contra Costa County. <coughs> so the those are the goals. Not working. You want me to do it? It's okay. Christina, can you hit enter? Yeah, thanks. Thank you, thank you, Stephanie. So the the first component is Rossmore. So I've been to Rossmore a couple times. I'm not saying that I feared for my life, but I've been there a couple times. There's a lot of people driving there very elderly. And so they're not that good, but they have no other option than to drive around to the bocce ball court and or the movie theater in Rossmore. And to make matters worse is in order to catch the county connection bus, they've got to walk outside of the, the gated community across the street to the Safeway. So the idea is, how do we use our, our recent success in our shared autonomous vehicle pilot project, roll a half a dozen of the vehicles out at Rossmore, have a guaranteed ride on demand service, and then we're negotiating with County Connection and bring their buses into Rossmore, make that connection so that patrons can get onto that bus and then go off and shop in Walnut Creek and or catch BART and go see a show in San Francisco, come back, get a guaranteed, bring them back into the facility, there's a shuttle there, and shuttle them back to their homes. That may reduce the amount of cars, clean the air, and those kinds of things. So that was pro proposal number one. Uh, thanks. <laughs> number two is that we, we have had a number of meetings with our, our county hospital over some issues, and they had mentioned that they have a high absentee rate, and a lot of the issues were lack of transportation. And so since we're the, in the transportation business, we started thinking, okay, how do we lower the absentee rate and make better use of the doctor's time? Because they're there eight hours a day or 10 hours a day. And if, if they see a patient and they don't, they're still there. And then they, the patients tend to stack up in the afternoon, evening time, and they don't get good, good care. So the idea is to have, start out with a minivan, outfit that eventually with self-driving vehicle technology, and start testing self-docking wheelchair apparatus. And so the idea is try to have a guaranteed ride on demand service to get the people to see the doctors when the issue is minor and versus when it's chronic or it's, it's a major issue. And so the idea is to lower the absentee rate, the doctors, or the Medi county hospital people are all on board. Troy Kaji is actually, we did a, Lindsay and I flew to Los Angeles, did a event for, uh, there was tape for C-SPAN on our, on our pro innovation program. And one of the doctors was in Southern California working out watching C-SPAN. He said, hey, that, that dude is from Contra Costa. That's where I work. So that's how I met him. <laughs> and so we've had this conversation now just because of that C-SPAN. But anyway, this is item number two, or proposal number two. And then the last is along Interstate 680, finally decide, okay, what is the number of autonomous vehicles that you can add to a lane? What is the capacity? And then how do we model the future to ensure that we're, when we're going to widen roadways? Because, you know, it's, it's not that easy to widen a roadway. It's great when it starts and it's great when it's finished. But during the middle parts of that project, we're getting inundated with a lot of, hey, it's too noisy, it's too dusty. How long is it going to take? No matter what we do to try to accelerate construction on Interstate 680, it's still not good enough. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to find ways of not having to widen freeways. We're running out of land. It, it's just latent demand will take over the added capacity. So how do we make better use of what we have? So this is the idea on the third phase. The other issue we agreed with is how do we then share the data and get better metrics for safety? So right now, well, we'll come to you and say, hey, we had a good year last year. We, if, instead of 40,000 people killed on our roadways, we only have 38,000 people killed on our roadways. It's going down. It's going in the right direction. Well, why don't we get that to zero? And that's the whole notion behind our, our um, vision zero. No more fatalities, no more injuries on our transportation system. So let's come up with better metrics. So right now our metrics are number of fatalities, number of injuries, 
and fatalities and injuries per 100 million vehicle miles traveled. How do we deal with safety? It's more reactive. So X amount of people are hurt, injured at a certain location, we send people out to take a look at it. Why don't we use sensors and gather sensor data from these vehicles in the future and look at near-miss data, skidding data, and then go out on a proactive basis and try to fix the issue before it becomes a, a, a bad issue. And so that's what we're trying to do. That's what we pledge to USDOT in our application. Habib, Habib and his team, Tim and Jack and others, help put the finishing touches on this. I think it's a very well-done report to, to, to um, USDOT. So it's our, it's our second allocation from USDO. The first was for our mobility on demand grant. That was eight million. This is seven and a half million. So I think we're doing pretty well. So we're excited about it. We're, we're gonna, Tim's gonna lead the charge to get us to a, what they call a notice to proceed. We haven't started that process. We haven't heard back from our $8 million grant for an NTP, but once that starts, Tim has been in a negotiation with BART. We're going to use their trip planner. I think that's the idea still, right? If we need to modify it to make it more usable, we're going to do that. But I did talk to, talk to others about our grant program. So that's that in a nutshell is our, our grant. That's pretty exciting. Bob? Yeah. Question, Randy. Where does... Where, where do these funds go into, and how do we draw down, or how do we, who, who handles this? So it's, a, I think these are direct allocations. Yes, yeah, so yes, yeah. or so it's reimbursement. So it's not. So it's, this is the frustrating part of this. This federal program generally, typically, is reimbursement. So in, if you have a disaster, you spend your money and you wait to get reimbursed. So these innovation programs, the budget starts out at zero. And so what we do is we get a pledge of $8 million, in this case, $7.5 million. This project is going to go out and form partnerships with the private sector, AAA and others. And so the proposal, and also Innovate 680, because we have some money on Innovate 680. So the idea is to build a, almost a $30 million program, but we have to spend our money first. And so sometimes that is where we're saying, well, we don't have the money yet, so we can't pay you. and and so that's how it works. But in this case, it's a, it's a $7.5 million reimbursement. It's like, so we have to spend our money first, and we do have money in the bank. So it's not like that's an issue. But sometimes from an accounting perspective, some of the, sometimes it's more, more difficult. But it's a reimbursement program. I think it's going to go very well. We have some money identified for Innovate 680. I think we have $10 million. So we can start spending our money, and they get reimbursed over time, and at the end of the day, we'll have a kick-ass uh, proposal. <laughs> I mean, if, we lower, if you lower absentee rate at a county hospital, that model can be used oh. anywhere in the United That's States, right. yes, anywhere in the world. And if you can go to senior citizens' gated community, it works there. It works in Trilogy. It works in mm -hmm. Somerset. It works everywhere else. And that's a problem because we're aging as society. That's right. Uh, because when we put this out and and – Obviously, wherever I go in Brentwood now, you know, we have really aged out there. I mean, some, we now have Somerset 1, um, Somerset 2, Somerset 3, Somerset 4, and Trilogy, not counting the, the city. So they're really interested, all the Somersets, uh, they're truly interested in what can we do in the sense, because I, I chatted about us that but it kind of put me in a spot so uh, they want to volunteer their facilities also for something so in this case what made uh, Ross more attractive is they reached out a long time ago and said how do we partner with you they saw us on television somewhere and their uh, CEO is actually a Cal Poly San Luis Obispo graduate not a Pomona graduate so <laughs> I, I really was he and I bonded immediately I'm when he said sure. he was a Mustang <laughs> And, and uh, but they own their roads. Yeah. They own the roads, and so yeah. you don't have to get NHTSA, National <laughs> Highway Traffic Safety Administration approval. We want to. They own the roads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that makes Somerset it a, is private. a lot easier. Somerset is private. A lot easier. A lot easier. So yeah, okay. we'd love to roll it out in Somerset. We have a domestically manufactured partner. We'll announce here very shortly, and okay. they want to roll these out. That's a teaser. All right, <laughs> Newell. Um, Randy, uh, just a, a great job to everybody and Tim on working on both these grants. Uh, I just want to be clear, though, on the um, K-12 
County Hospital, you're talking about patients. Yes. Yes, yes. It's usually when you say absentees, isn't you're talking about employees. Uh, no, no yeah. it's for patients. Yeah, sorry. Right. Thank People you. are not making their appointments right. because they can't get there. And then they show up late and then they get there. Right. Okay. Well, and it stacks sure. up toward the end of the day. Yeah. Got it. Because they better. finally found a ride or something. Yeah. Great idea. Plus, it costs a lot of money when you cancel. It does. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wasted resources. Yeah. Right. Nice job. Wasted resources. So this might pay for itself. Yeah. 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 That would be great. All right. Any other questions on that one? All right. Lindsay? I think we're just going to end on the good news. The rest is in your packet. All right. Very good. Any questions on the rest that's in the packet? A lot of technical stuff in there. All right. Then we will move from legislation on to item 7, which is our 2020 STIP candidate projects. And Stephanie, you're already in place. Yes, and you're I'm ready to go. Good. Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. My name is Stephanie Hughes, Senior Engineer with the Authority. We're asking you this morning to approve TCC's recommendation on the 2020 STIP programming. Every two years, the California Transportation Commission, or CTC, adopts a five-year STIP that details how it intends to commit state and federal funding for upcoming five-year period. The 2020 STIP covers five-year period from fiscal year 2021 through fiscal year 24-25. As the STIP is updated biannually, each new STIP adds two new years to the prior programming commitment. The 2020 STIP will add programming of funds in fiscal year 23-24 and fiscal year 24-25. Statewide, 75% of the STIP funds is divided into county shares that are programmed by regional transportation planning agencies like MTC for the Bay Area region while the remaining 25% is programmed by Caltrans for the Interregional Transportation Improvement Program, or ITIP. And just a little tidbit, the last time Contra Costa received ITIP funds was for the Caldecott Tunnel and the earlier segment of the Highway 4 widening project. In anticipation for the release of the 2020 STIP fund estimate, the authority issued the call for projects for the 2020 STIP on May 15, 2019. On June 24th, CTC released a draft fund estimate with a very limited new programming capacity, which led the authority to cancel the call for project on July 3rd. Subsequently, the state caught an error in the original fund estimate and released a revised draft estimate on July 12th, showing modest capacity for Contra Costa. The authority then reissued the call for project on July 15th with application due date postponed to August 9th to allow applicants more time to complete their applications. The final fund estimate was approved by the CTC on August 14th. There's approximately $36.25 million for new programming for Contra Costa in the 2020 STIP. However, we have to take into account the following two items. First, $31.1 million to pay back American Recovery and Re Reinvestment Act, or ARA funds, for the Caldecott project. Back in 2009, in order to expedite the expenditures of ARA funds and to maintain construction schedule for the Caldecott project, MTC programmed 31.1 in ARA funds for the project to backfill STIP funds that were not available at that time. Second, we need to set aside $563,000 for two years of planning, programming, and monitoring activities for MTC and authority staff. With these two reductions or deductions, there is approximately $4.6 million left in 2020 STIP for new project programming in fiscal year 24 and fiscal year 25. Though the passage of SB1 was supposed to provide sustainable and stable funding for STIP through the additional price-based excise tax, the, STIP tw the 2020 STIP funding is less than expected. CTC and Caltrans staff contribute a lower than expected programming capacity to over-programming of the 2018 STIP, the advancement of future STIP shares during the 2018 STIP cycle to provide match for SB1 funded projects, and their overall decreasing trend in ca gasoline consumption due to hybrid and electric vehicles. In response to the call for project issued in July, the authority received six applications totaling 15.8 million in funding requests. Nine members of the TCC or staff of the TCC members served on the STIP com committee to evaluate the project, as shown on page 7-3 of your packet. The evaluators were split into two groups, and they scored all the applications, except for those submitted by their own agencies. CCTA staff did not participate in the scoring, but only facilitated the process with the, with the evaluators. Attachment A of page 7-6 is the prior, prioritized list of the projects showing average scores and rankings. 
Please note that the evaluation committee determined that the application for the station building phase of the Hercules Regional Intermodal Transit Center, or RITC, was inel ineligible to compete for the STIP funds. One of the screening criteria was that the project or project phase seeking STIP funds have to be fully funded with the requested STIP funds or other secured fund sources. The funding plan included in the application for the RITC included fund sources that were not secured. The expected 2020 STIP programming of 4.6 million can sufficiently fund the top two projects. The top ranked project is the westbound State Route 4 operational improvement project. The overall SR4 operational improvement project consists of multiple packages in the eastbound and westbound directions that aim to eliminate existing bottlenecks and correct operational inefficiencies between I-680 and Bailey Road. The requested $3 million in STIP funds will fund the environmental phase for two westbound packages between Willow Pass Road and Port Chicago Highway. Improvements include auxiliary lane, general purpose lane, and ramp, and ramp improvements. The second rank project is the county-sponsored Treat Boulevard corridor improvement from North Main Street to Jones Road, which is just around the building here. The project will implement the Treat Boulevard corridor plan that was approved by County Board of Supervisors in 2017. The proposed project will include non-buffered and buffered bike lanes with green markings, ADA-compliant curb ramps, shared use paths, and removal of existing free right turn lanes and intersections of Tree Boulevard and northbound 680 off-ramp, Tree Boulevard and Oak Road in the southbound direction, and Tree Boulevard and Jones Road in the eastbound direction. The project is currently in the preliminary engineering phase, and the requested $1.6 million in stiff funds will go towards construction. At their September 19th meeting, the TCC approved the Evaluation Committee's recommend recommendation for the prioritized list and to program the 2020 STIP funds to the top two projects. Walnut Creek staff on the TCC expressed some concerns for the Treat Boulevard project. Following the TCC meeting, the county staff reached out to Walnut Creek staff to begin addressing the concerns from the city. The county staff is committed to work with Walnut Creek to address their issues and they're confident that they can reach an agreement um, before the STIP funding is available for construction in 23-24 fiscal year. Lastly, MTC requires project sponsors to adopt a resolution of local support for projects sponsored for the SIP funding. Resolution 1957P, shown in your attachment B, is the authority's resolution of local support for the Westbound SR4 operational improvement project. In summary, staff request your approval of the 2020 STIP programming um, with to the uh, to the top two projects um, that we had I just mentioned and then staff also request your approval for resolution of 1957 P um, with your approval of the programming staff will continue to work at MTC staff to program existing and new project into 2020 step which is scheduled to be approved by the CTC in March 2020 and that concludes my presentation and thank you to to for listening to the Long story of the 2020 step, which was been, has been very eventful um, compared to the recent cycles we have. And with that, I will take any questions. And the county staff is also here if you have any specific question regarding the um, treat bowl of our project. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for Stephanie Newell? Uh, this is sort of a, a higher level. Uh, the projects and everything, your presentation is perfect. Your staff report is excellent as well. Um, great projects. Um, we had an in-house rule because of all the step money that we advanced to East County, that for so many years, they were not eligible for step. Is, mm -hmm. now, is the 23, yeah. are we gonna be at the point where? Yeah, we already passed that point. So last 2018 cycle oh, was, was the last one that okay. they were precluded right. from competing. Great. Just wanted to make sure I couldn't remember the date. Great question. But uh, I would move the item then. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion from Arnrich. Second. And a second from Taylor, a question? All right. She was another second. All right. Very good. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Good report, Stephanie. Well done. And it was a very good staff report. Um, next items on the agenda, correspondence and news clippings. Um, commissioner and staff comments. I have no reports. Commissioners have any reports? Executive staff comments. Yes, I, I, I just may I give you an update on how we're proceeding Please. with getting the city's approvals? Yes. Yeah, okay. So we have attended to 10. So Hercules, Clayton, 
Walnut Creek, Lafayette, Brentwood, the county, Danville, El Cerrito, Pinole, and Martinez, and all supported. So we're now Wonderful. over the midpoint. Now we're heading down. Population were over the top two? I don't think so, because Concord... With Richmond in there, that helps. Concord. Yeah. We need Concord in there, too. Yeah. And when is Concord on the list? Next two Tuesday? Weeks, two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Yeah, we'll Just keep... want to thank Tim Hale for doing an outstanding presentation. Unanimous at our council. Um, even one council member had some concerns about something, nothing to do with the tap. Didn't really come up. Um, and I think some good feedback on uh, some sort of the marketing concepts. But uh, thanks, Tim. Bob. Not to be outdone. <laughs> <laughs> Better say something nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's what it is. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, we, we, Tim, you gave, obviously, you gave a great uh, report for us. And we did a roll call vote with a lot of hooting and a hollering, and the union, and and, and we had a little bit of a party in our chambers, and the roll call vote obviously was 5-0. And I had uh, chatted with a few of my council members. Didn't break the Brown Act, but uh, they there was no issues. So uh, uh, my question, I guess, is uh, are we going to be done with this before the holidays? We have to be done by the well, end I of October. That's what I was wondering. Because that's what when it goes to the Board of that's, Supervisors. Oh, okay. It's all on before yeah, Thanksgiving. That's, it's done. Yeah, that October 30th is the bo special TEP board meeting that right. will be taking action on the, on, the on the on the, on the ordinance and the resolution. I just wanted to clear up the dates. Because <laughs> yeah. And then time, the Board of Supervisors are scheduled to act on it on November 19th before the holidays. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. Trees. So I was going to say not to be outdone, but I want to give a shout out to Don Tatson <laughs> because Don, that was a great um, presenter, uh, very trusted by the community and by the council, and Don did a great job covering all of the questions. We also had a packed house as well, but we did not erupt into a big party after. We were just happy and moved on. And then I do want to say Tim did a great job the other day presenting at the um, Pleasant Hill Chamber of Commerce. I got to follow him on census work, but Tim did a great job. Thanks. Well, then and Lafayette we got to was chip in for Clayton, too, <laughs> too because Randy came. <laughs> Randy always does a great job. And... Um, we were, we were not unanimous, but that was somebody who's just against taxes in general, so that was sort of an expected vote. So, um, But all, all going well around the county, and we're looking forward to, to moving on to the next step of letting the voters decide. So that would be wonderful. Okay, um, if there's no other business, we are adjourned to our next meeting on Thursday, November 7th. See you then.